I am Spencer Jones, a PhD student in mechanical engineering at Tennessee Tech University, and I am presenting an industrial application for radiative cooling. So first of all, what is radiative cooling? This refers to the creation of a heat sink by emitting thermal radiation from a source out into, in this case, out into space. So thermal radiation refers to the band uh, within the electromagnetic spectrum that falls within the ultraviolet to infrared range. The uh, majority of thermal radiation actually falls within ultraviolet, uh, but there are there there is still significant energy uh, within this infrared region. So the uh, the thermal radiation conversation has to include the ideal emitter of thermal radiation, which is called a black body. The energy of a photon emitted from a black body can be seen uh, using Planck's law, where we relate energy of, uh, of the photons emitted to the wavelength of that photon and the temperature of the device uh, of the emission source. So how do we actually get um, our thermal radiation from the surface out into space? We have to pass through the atmosphere. And as we know from the, uh, from the climate conversation now, there are a plethora of different molecules that will absorb thermal radiation, those are the greenhouse gases. So it can, it has been shown that there are specific wavelengths where thermal radiation can pass through the atmosphere. The main window is called the atmospheric transmission window and it falls within the ultraviolet spectrum. It falls between eight and 13 microns shown here. So this, this curve here is the emissive power of a black body at 300 Kelvin or 80 degrees Fahrenheit. We see that a large area of this, uh, a, a, a large area under this curve falls within this atmospheric transmission window. This area here actually represents the potential cooling power. So if we can increase the amount of emissive power that actually falls within this eight to 13 micron region, we can increase the potential for cooling power from a radiative device. So if we look at the other research in the radiative cooling world, um, Dr. Lee has used um, radiative paints radiative cooling paints to decrease cooling load uh, for building envelope studies. This was achieved by having a paint with very high reflectivity along with some radiative cooling characteristics. Some of the other research in this field uh, in, includes changes in geometry and changing the emission device the actual material doing the emitting of thermal radiation. But currently, none of these research, none, none of these research topics have been applied to industrial applications. So here we want to look at the solar energy industry, where currently we have the solar energy industry is, is responsible for roughly 3%, 2.8%, according to the Energy Information Agency, of the total US electric generation portfolio. This is expected to increase drastically in the next few decades as, uh, as renewables use is, uh, is increased. So with the increase in solar panel usage, 
expected to increase drastically, we need to address the inefficiencies associated with their operation. And one of these inefficiencies is the dependency on the efficiency to the solar panel surface temperature. In this graph, we see that uh, at 70 degrees C, this whole curve represents 70 degrees C, we have roughly 40 watts of output, whereas at 10 degrees C, we have 54 watts of output. So we can explore this effect even more by going to the uh, worst case scenario. Let's look at a desert climate where your, your temperature and your solar irradiation is going to be at its maximum. So here, the solar panel surface temperature can easily be 66 or, or more, 66 degrees C. As compared to 20 degrees C, if we use an average temperature coefficient for the average solar panel, we get that we have a decrease in 16% efficiency of our average uh, solar panel. So what is one of, what are some of the effects, what, what are some of the methods that we can use to mitigate this effect? Well, we can use fins, which is truly a passive cooling mechanism, or if we want to increase that convection coefficient even more, we use a fluid, and even better, we use a cooled fluid. But how do you get a, uh, a cold water source, generally, especially around here, we're going to use evaporative cooling. But if we go back to our desert climate example, you're not, you're probably not going to want to evaporate much water to get a, an increase in solar panel efficiency in the desert, because your, your water source is not going to be uh, limitless, like it might seem around here. So if we can cool water without losing uh, some of the water, then that would be ideal. And we can actually do that by using a radiative cooling device. This is the design as, uh, as shown from uh, reference eight. And what we're doing here is tying the cooling uh, provided by this device to the solar panel by a cooled water loop. Well, the results for this device are published to be 12 degrees C below the ambient conditions. And using our uh, temperature coefficient from before, that relates to a 4% increase in efficiency. So by decreasing the energy or decreasing the temperature of this solar panel by the reduction of this energy, we can actually, on average, get a 4% increase in solar panel efficiency. So radiative cooling, as we can see by the low thermal, the, the, the low cooling power is not uh, ideal in all applications. But when effectively coupled to a cooling loop, it has the potential to be the most effective passive cooling technology, especially in regions where water is scarce. Those regions, you're not gonna want to evaporate water. Uh, so you're gonna need to conserve as much water as possible. Therefore, radiative cooling could be a viable option in those regions. I'd like to thank the rest of the advanced industrial energy class, Dr. Languri, Lori, Miles, Jared, and Patrick, and Dr. Lee for his presentation on radiative cooling technologies.